Hi viewers, in this video I would like to continue from the last equation of my previous video on the expectation value of position operator and would derive the equation for the expectation value of momentum operator. We know from our previous video that the time dependent expectation value of position operator is given by this one equation. Note that the time dependency and the expectation value on the left side of this equation is only due to the time dependency of wave function psi as a function of x and t and the integrand on the right side because the position operator x hat by itself is time independent. If I differentiate this equation with respect to time, it can be written into this form where I have just taken the time derivative at both sides of the equation. Since the integration is with respect to position, therefore I can take the time derivative inside the integral and can put it into this form. Note that I have converted the, comp the full derivative of time into partial derivative because the wave function depends both on time and position. For the time being considering x times psi as a single entity and applying the product formula of differentiation, we can write the integrand as psi steric partial over partial t of x times y plus partial psi steric over partial t times x times psi d of x. Note that for writing easiness, I have dropped the argument of psi and have written psi x of t equal to psi. Since the operator x is time independent, therefore I can write the term partial over partial t x of psi equals x times partial psi over partial t. With this replacement, equation 3 can easily be put into this form. Now from Schrodinger wave equation we have iota h bar partial psi over partial t equals minus h bar square divided by 2 m partial square psi over partial x squared plus v psi or taking iota h bar to the right side of the equation we can put it into this final form and similarly taking the complex conjugate of equation 5 we can put this equation into this form where I have taken the steric of psi and have changed the sign in front of iota and I have considered the potential v as a real quantity therefore I have substituted v steric equals v. Now substituting the values from equation 5 and 6 into equation 4 I can easily put the equation into this form where the term inside the bracket in the first term is the value of partial psi over partial t and the term inside the brackets in the second term is the value of partial psi steric over partial t. Since potential energy is a function of position x, therefore its position can be changed with respect to the wave function Keeping this in mind, it is easy to see that the two terms with potential energy cancel out as one is negative, the other is positive. And equation 7 reduced to this one form, where I have written each term into a separate integral. You see, in equation 7, with the help of Schrodinger wave equation, we have eliminated the time derivative in favor of position derivative. And this shift from time derivative into position derivative makes our further analytical analysis quite easier. Now let us play with this equation through the rules of integration. Considering only the integral part of the second term on the right side of equation 8 and applying integration by part, I can write into this form where I have considered partial psi steric or partial x as first function in the integrand. Now, the first term in equation 9 goes to 0 due to the fact that the wave function vanishes at the boundaries 
Also, using the product formula of differentiation, partial or partial x, x times psi equal psi plus x partial over partial x, using this expression in the integrand on the right side of equation 9, it can be put into this form, where I have just replaced the value of the above equation. Now, opening the brackets in the integrand on the right side, it can be split again into two terms, and I'm writing them in separate integrals in equation 10. Let us apply integration by parts one more time to each term on the right side of equation 10. The first integral on the right side becomes like this, where I have treated psi as the first term of the integrand and partial psi steric over partial x and as the second term of the integrand and have applied the integration by part formula. Again, the first term in this integral goes to zero because the wave function vanishes at the boundaries. So we can write the first term of equation 10 in this form as in equation 11. And the second term of equation 10 can be written into this form where again I have considered partial psi steric over partial x as first term of the integrand and x time partial psi over partial x as second time of the integral. So again the first term on the right side of equation 12 is 0 and the derivative in the integrand of the second terms can be expanded through the product formula and can be put into this form partial over partial x x times partial psi over partial x equals partial psi over partial x plus x partial square psi over partial x squared. With this replacement equation 12 can again be put into this form where I have just substituted the value from the above equation. Now again opening the breakers in the integrand and writing the two terms into separate integrals we can write it into this form. Now putting the values of equation 11 and equation 13 in equation 10 we can write equation 10 into this form. Now the first and second terms on the right side are similar therefore we can combine by multiplying the factor 2 with it like I have done in this equation and rewrite the equation as two terms on the right side. Now using this value of equation 14 into equation 8 we can put the derivative of the expectation values into this form of the equation where I have substituted the value of equation 14 into the second term of equation 8. Okay, writing the second terms into two separate integrals, then uh, uh, integral the equation takes the form this one. And in this equation, the first and second term cancel out each other. Therefore, the equation finally reduced to this form, a single term on the right side, which I can further modify by taking minus iota h bar inside the integral and can write it as psi steric minus iota h bar partial over partial x psi d of x. Now obviously the integrand on the right side of this equation is the expectation value of the x component of momentum operator. That is, we can write the integral as the expectation value of p of x equals integral from xi to xf psi steric minus iota h bar partial psi over partial x times psi d of x. With the help of equation 16, equation 15 can finally be put into the form the derivative of the expectation value of position equals 1 over m times the expectation value of the x component of momentum. Equation 17 gives the velocity of expectation value of position. Note that this is different from the expectation value of the velocity of a particle. Since velocity has no operator, therefore we cannot directly measure the velocity of a particle in quantum mechanics. Moreover, 
equation 16 and the result obtained for the expectation value of position in the previous video suggests that to find the expectation value of an operator A, we just need to sandwich the operator between the complex conjugate of the wave function and the wave function and integrate it over the whole space. That is, the expectation value of an operator A can be written in the form of this integral where I have sandwiched the operator A inside the integrand between the complex conjugate of the wave function and the wave function itself and have integrated it from xi to xf. Equation 18 is a general quantum mechanical rule for calculating the expectation value of an operator. What would be this expectation value if psi is not an eigenfunction of the operator A? I will answer this question in the next video on expectation values of operators in general.